Hey everybody, and welcome to another Jamovi tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to go ahead and show a uh, ANOVA, that is a factorial ANOVA. So I'm going to have two independent variables that are between subjects or independent groups or between groups, however you want to call it these days, but they're going to be two independent leveled factors for this particular tutorial. And then in the next tutorial, I will do repeated measures and I'll show how in programs like Jamovi, JASP, SPSS, you go through the repeated measures to do any kind of ANOVA that has a within subjects or within groups variables or mixed models, ones that have between and within subject designs. But for this tutorial, I'm going to go ahead and just do between subjects factorial ANOVA. As always, I am using the latest build of Jamovi, and that build, uh, according to our friends at Jamovi, is version 1.6.4 now, uh, a iteration of 1.6. Again, this is um, their most recent build, but of course they still mark 1.2.27 as their most solid build. It just won't have all of these new features. Okay, so let's open up some data. Uh, I took the liberty of going ahead and opening up some data to get us started. This is from the data library, Learning Statistics with Jamovi. Um, and here we have uh, 18 participants, and they were either in a, um, uh, a milk group, yes or no, and they either had real sugar, fake sugar, or no sugar at all. So this is going to be a 2x3 or a 3x2 uh, factorial design. Uh, but one of the things I do need to do to modify these two groups is I need to change the data. So we're going to actually use the data modification feature of these variables. So I'm going to go through and I am going to change these to um, yeses and nos. And I can do that by going into the data editor. So I'm going to hold off on this first and I'm going to do one and a zero. Zero for no, one for yes. And I'm going to go through and I could potentially use the transform as well, but there are only 18. So I'm going to uh, just do it this quick. And then for sugar, I am going to do uh, zero for none, two for uh, code, uh, two for real, and three for fake. So this is going to be a two, this is going to be a three, uh, or no, sorry, one and two because I'm using zero. So fake is two, real is one, one, and the reason why I'm doing this is because I need to have integers here to uh, do the calculations with. And it's just easier to do it like this and then just label what the codes are instead of having text, because text always makes things a little funky. Text always makes things a little funky. So that's a zero, that's a zero, and that's... Okay, and now I can change this to an integer, okay? And um, now the labels are going to be uh, milk was um, no milk, and then one was yes. Oops. Of course, hopefully I'm not going to forget what all of these mean. So I'm going to change this to integer again, and zero was none, uh, real was number one, and fake was number two. All right, now I can do the ANOVA. All right. So that this by far makes Jamovi the more complete package when you compare Jamovi to Jazz because I can do all of that in the same program. I don't need to go to CSV or anything. And I know that offloads a lot of work uh, for a particular user, end user. And I understand why JASP makes that um, not part of their functionality because it beefs up the program. 
And so you don't need as much to do it, to use it, uh, takes fewer resources, etc. So let's go into um, ANOVA here. And let's choose not one way ANOVA because we have two variables. So we need to use ANOVA here. So we're going to use ANOVA. And so it already knows that we're going to have more than one fixed factor in here. So we're going to put the babble as the dependent variable because it's clearly how much babbling this child does. Uh, and it's continuous variables. And that's what we need for our, our, uh, our dependent variable. And then our fixed factors are going to be what milk and sugar groups do we get. And so by default, what you're going to get is the main effects and interactions and I'm just going to go ahead and expand all of these okay there we go it's going to give us the ANOVA source table for each of these items in the ANOVA test so we have the main effect of milk the main effect of sugar and then the interaction of sh milk and sugar groups and then our residuals or our error and so we have our sums of squares for that, our degrees of freedom, mean squares by dividing sums of squares and degrees of freedom. We get an F value for each row. And then we get a P value for these Fs because F is a known distribution. Now let's go through each of these options. So we can do an overall model test. Overall model test is the um, entire set of fixed factors on the dependent variable. Now for the majority of factorial ANOVAs, you're probably not going to use this overall model test, but in case you want it, it's there. It's included by default in an SPSS, um, and most of the time it's ignored. Uh, now we can also get our eta squareds and our partial eta squareds, which in my opinion is the better uh, of the two, eta squared and partial eta squared. And then we could also get omega, uh, omega squared, but we don't need omega, omega squared uh, for a between subjects factorial. Partial eta squared and eta squared are your two um, big ones. So I'm going to leave omega squared unchecked. It would just append it to the end of this as a new column here. Now, um, these are our models, and you can add, subtract. So if you don't really care about the, uh, if you don't really care about the interaction term, you can get rid of it. See, if I click that over there, it gets rid of it. Um, but it's definitely important to include it. You have to choose both of them to do the interaction. Okay, so you choose both of them to get the interactions, and then you can all, if you have more than one component here, you can do the two ways, the three ways, the four ways, the five ways. I wouldn't recommend four-way and five-way interactions because they're extremely difficult to interpret. <laughs> so you might as well just get rid of them. <laughs> Anyways, uh, you can also choose your types of sums of squares, and this has to do with bias correction in the sums of squares column. Uh, so you can change that. Type 3 is the most common. It's the one that is uh, least bias corrected. Type 2 is more bias corrected, and type 1 is more bias corrected from there. We can do our homogeneity tests. We get D Levine's, and it tells us whether or not uh, our groups have equal variances or not. And with a p-value of 0.449, we do not have any issues with Levine's test. We can also do a Shapiro-Wilk test for our DV babble is it normally distributed and our statistic is fairly close to one which means our p-value is going to be fairly close to one as well and so we have no problems on the Shapiro-Wilk test for normality no normal so uh, variance and normality assumptions not violated in this uh, small sample size which is quite strange right and we could also test test uh, our um, theoretical re residual quantiles against our standardized residuals and see where the dots fall on this theoretical line and they look fairly close to it so that just tells us we're doing well with our variances and our error um, we can do contrasts if we wanted to um, these uh, options are here I'm not going to go through these, but you can get different kinds of contrasts to compare milk to one another and sugar to the three uh, things. That would be specifically for contrast hypotheses. You can also get 
um, post hoc tests. So uh, here I'm just going to select all of them just to show you what it looks like. And what it's going to give us is our post hoc test down here. Now we don't really need a post hoc test for milk. And the reason is, is that in this column here, milk is not a significant uh, factor in this model, probably because there's uh, only 18 people in the entire group. And so I would imagine nine and nine. And it's also it in and of itself a t-test as well. So you don't need another t-test to show you that there's no difference because we have Tuki here and it's telling us it's the same p-value. If I also include Bonferroni, again, you'll get the same p-value because nothing really has changed. We'd also want to get Cohen's D for each of these pairwise comparisons because why not? Why not? These are paired comparisons, so let's do it. However, uh, let's talk about sugar for a second because that was a three-level variable. That was a three-level variable. We've got a fairly close but still statistically significant. It is less than 0.05 in, in you know all manners of speaking. Uh, so we can go down here and we can look, okay, well, that was a significant omnibus main effect. Now, where is the actual uh, effect? And so we can compare no, uh, no sugar to real and no sugar to fake and then real to fake. And we can see what is... Uh, where the effect lives, and it looks like it is uh, none to real, um, has the biggest mean difference and thus the largest T and smallest P values, with a very large Cohen's D for that matter. So comparing none to real means more babbling, right? There's more babbling here because this is a negative number, so there's a smaller mean to this mean, and so it's a negative number, and that it means, that mean means. Ha <laughs> uh, ha That uh, uh, we have um, a, a larger number here, so more babbling with real sugar. And there's no difference between real and fake sugar, or I guess sweetener in that case. You can also get your um, uh, postdoc comparisons broken down by milk and sugar comparisons. So we can have no and how that... Um, plays out here with comparing no sugar, no milk to no milk and no sugar. So this is basically doing pairwise comparisons of all of your cells. And I don't necessarily suggest doing that. Okay, so I don't suggest doing that, but it, it's basically comparing all of the cells together um, in all of the combinations that the cells can be compared in. So that's what uh, you would do. Okay, and so the last thing that I want to talk about is the marg estimated marginal means. Okay, the estimated marginal means. So we have um, our, we could get our descriptives if you want to, but we don't really need that in this case uh, because what we really want is our marginal means. And here's where we get the marginal means for milk by itself. So the main effect of milk and I, I chose uh, error bars on these plots, so I chose um, to get the plots and the tables, and equal weighted cells, and then my error bars are standard errors. I, for, as far as visually speaking goes, I like that because we can tell if there's any overlap, then there's probably not an effect. Uh, and here, what I did was term one is just milk, term two is just sugar, and then in term three I put both of them, and Jamovi knows, this module knows that I want to do, th that having both of them in here is the interaction term. So here is my sugar, uh, here's my, my means plotted on this, and um, you could do a line graph if you really wanted to, and you could see how these are affected, and so how many babbles. Of course, on all of these plots, the scale is going to be automatically generated, which is why I suggest always to ch um take this information and go put it into Excel to make your graph so you can have a an accurate Y scale here. And then here is where um, milk by sugar gets plotted. So this is um, my milk known yes, and then I have three lines for none, real, and fake. And you can see that there are some interactions going on uh, because uh, fake 
fake uh, fake sugar really depends on milk, and it's the opposite effect of babbling that has the opposite opposite effect on babbling that no sugar and um, or sorry, this is uh, real sugar and no sugar have on babbling. And here are those marginal means, and this is what you would use to plot this again in Excel or Google Sheets or whatever. Some more uh, expansive and comprehensive plotting program than just taking this plot. Now, uh, in order to determine where our inter interactions live, we'd have to do uh, simple effects. And unfortunately, Jamovi does not have a simple effects uh, situation set up for uh, between subjects ANOVAs. This is a, a strength of the module in JASP. So uh, if you want to do simple effects tests, you'll have to do either one-way ANOVAs if you're going to do uh, the sugar variable, or you'll have to do a series of t-tests if you're going to use the milk variable to determine it, what the qualifying languages, what the qualifying effects are. You can sort of glean that from the post hoc comparisons table, but this is such an unwieldy table, it's very difficult to grab stuff out of it. So I would just do um, either one-way ANOVAs uh, of the sugar variable collapsing across milk, or do the milk collapsing across sugar for your simple. And that is how you do a factorial between subjects ANOVA in Jamovi. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please don't forget to hit like. And if you like this content, please subscribe to my channel. Uh, more Jamovi videos are coming along. And uh, if you want to check out my JASP tutorial videos, they also exist. Thanks for watching.